bulletin, a special edition of Ukrainian Perspective telling about the Trinity festivities and a story about Ukrainian online education platform Prometheus presented by Tatiana Makitenko. First, the news read by Bogdan Zhuk. The situation in the eastern Ukraine war zone remains tense as Russia-backed militants keep attacking Ukrainian army positions and violating the ceasefire. One Ukrainian serviceman was killed in the combat zone while two more were wounded. Presidential military spokesman Dr. Lysenko told a briefing on Monday morning. On Sunday, presidential military spokesman Alexander Montuzanek reported that three Ukrainian soldiers were killed and another one has been wounded in hostilities over the past day. The combined Russian and separatist forces attacked Ukrainian army positions in eastern Ukraine 31 times in the past 24 hours. The press center of the Ukrainian army operation headquarters said on Monday. The situation was most tense near the town of Krasnohorivka in the vicinity of southeastern seaport Mariupol, where separatists have lately intensified shelling. The militants keep using arms that were to be withdrawn to save distances from the contact line under the Minsk agreements on ceasefire. They used high-caliber mortars, tank shells, artillery systems, grenade launchers, machine guns, as well as small arms. In some cases, the government forces were forced to open retaliatory fire. On Sunday, according to the press center, there were 16 separatist attacks on Ukrainian army positions, also with the use of banned weapons. Kyiv is negotiating the soonest release of 25 Ukrainian hostages, advisor to the Ukrainian security service head Yuri Tandit said. We are ready for various compromises, a 25 for 50 formula is currently being discussed, Tandit said. In a TV interview aired on Sunday evening, Kyiv is doing its utmost for the release of prisoners from the separatists in eastern Ukraine, he said. Ukrainian member of parliament and military pilot Nadia Savchenko is taking part in the meeting of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, PACE, which starts June 20th in Strasbourg. Her sister Vera Savchenko said this on Facebook. This is Savchenko's first PACE session after her release from Russian prison. She was elected to the Ukrainian parliament in absentia while still imprisoned in Russia, where she was later convicted of involvement in murder of two Russian journalists in eastern Ukraine. She denied all charges while the international community called her trial biased and politically motivated. Savchenko was exchanged for two Russians in May after two years of imprisonment. She was also delegated by the Ukrainian parliament to PACE, where she became a member of the Committee on Migration. During the working visit of President of Ukraine Petro Poroshenko to France on Tuesday, he will meet with his French counterpart François Hollande to discuss bilateral relations, sanctions against Russia, ending the war in eastern Ukraine, and restoration of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. Ukraine Forum News Agency reported this, citing diplomatic sources in France. Poroshenko's press service later reported that his working visit on June 21 also includes meetings with National Assembly Speaker Claude Bartolon and Senate Chairman Gérard Larcher. The leaders of Ukraine, France, Russia and Germany are members of this so-called Normandy 4 group, which is working to find a solution to the conflict in eastern Ukraine. The Canada-Ukraine Business Forum kicked off in Toronto on June 20th. The participants' focus is ways to enhance economic relations between Canada and Ukraine. According to Ukraine Forum Agency, Prime Minister of Canada Justin Trudeau is slated to address the meeting participants. According to the organizers, about 500 members have registered for participation, including leading Canadian banks and investment funds. The big Ukrainian government delegation, which arrived in Toronto from Kyiv, is headed by First Vice Prime Minister Stepan Kubiv. It includes several ministers, heads of state-owned enterprises, and other senior officials. Members of the official delegation already met with representatives of the Ukrainian community in Canada. As reported, a free trade deal between the two countries is currently in the talks. And that ends the news from Radio Ukraine International. This is Radio Ukraine International, and up next is a special edition of Ukrainian Perspective featuring Trinity Day festivities in Ukraine. Here is Vera Mali. The week preceding the Trinity Sunday was also called Green, 
at the beginning of this week, you are asked to go to the fields or to the forest. They may grease there and sun. After that, they return to the village. And on week Sunday, girls again went to the very same forest where they had twined weeks, so as to untwine them this time. Each of the girls examined her wreath, whether it is still fresh or already faded, that helped them learn about their future happiness or unhappiness. On Sunday, the Trinity Day, girls used to tell the fortunes of their parents, sisters, brothers and fiancés. He whose wreath hasn't yet withered will live long. So we 